is another PowerPoint put together by Louisa Melton. And the first slide enables us to see what students might feel or, or think when they look at an article that's written in another language. You can see immediately you want to look at the pictures and try and figure out some of the words or names to try and help you understand what's going on. So looking at something like this would help us to see what students go through. She has put together eight key, eight key items when it comes to making content comprehensible for English language learners. The first one is preparation. We need to clearly define our content and language objectives so we know what we want to accomplish so that we can get ready uh, for our students. Uh, number two, we need to build background, so we need to explicitly link concepts to students' background experience and emphasize key vocabulary. So they have so many experiences, they just may not be in the English language, but if we draw upon those experiences, we can help students uh, be able to uh, learn and remember English um, vocabulary words. Number three, comprehensible input. We need to make sure our students understand when we speak with them and we accommodate their proficiency level and we clearly explain the academic tasks and we also use a variety of techniques to help us be successful in, in communicating with our ESOL students. Also, interaction number four. And this I've, I've seen so many of you are working on uh, small groups, giving your ESOL students a chance to speak in the class with other students and uh, in small groups. And number five is practice and application. We need lots of hands-on materials, lots of speaking and practice and uh, reading and lots of those application uh, hands-on materials. Number six, lesson delivery. We need to make sure that we appropriately pace the lesson to the student's ability level. And review, of course we need to provide a comprehensive review of key vocabulary so that they will be able to remember those words. And number eight, and we need to conduct frequent assessments of students' understanding and learning. So we need to use a variety of quick reviews, thumbs up, thumbs down, numbered wheels, um, small dry erase boards, and student self-assessment so that we know whether they are understanding um, the instruction and are able to um, meet their needs. Okay, next we're going to talk about access, which is the um, English language proficiency test for English language learners. So, as you can see right here, we have um, the scores. Now, listening, this orange arrow goes over, and you can see uh, where the confidence band is at a score of 340 out of 600. That would put them at a 5.0. So, in listening, that would exit them from the program. However, if we look at speaking at a 3.5, reading at a 1.9, and writing at 3.4, we see that they're, they're not going to be able to, to meet that. And we look at where we need to work with them. And then we have an overall composite of 3.1. And that, um, this assessment will go along with those ESOL proficiency levels that we've been discussing in class that are numbered one through six rather than one through four as found in the textbook. So in, uh, in developing, this would be an, an example of speaking for level three in grade cluster three through five. And so if your student, um, if we look over here that they came out as a 3.1, you see this red line over here? And then we would look at um, this is level three, so what we might do for speaking for that student based on assessment results. Okay, and over here for level one and level two, uh, for reading, because we noticed uh, that for reading, uh, they were over here at a level 1.9. So we look over here at the can-do descriptors and we say, this is what they can do. And we, we know where to start when we have this assessment in place and we look at um, how we can use this assessment to help design our instruction. And we will be on to part five because this video is ending and I'll see you in part, um, actually this is part five. I'll see you in part six, bye-bye.